Ladies and gentlemen, theys and gamers, welcome to Creme de la Creator, the podcast that celebrates remarkable content creators and their communities. My name is Grant Alexander. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Jake Lane. Jake, how are we doing this week? Tired. I feel that. Stressed. But happy to be here. Oh, yeah, I feel that. I may have had a tension headache for the last six hours or so. Ah. Which has gotten so bad to the point that I was also late for this recording because I spent 10 minutes looking for my glasses that were on my desk. Ah. So that's the kind of afternoon I've had. How about you? Um, Do you know, actually, in terms of the working week's been pretty good to me. I've been working with a a really great group of guys all week, um, delivering the training for them. Nice. So yeah, yeah, it's really awesome. And in fact, one of the guys has supplied me with this acoustic foam that is now making up my wardrobe recording booth. Hey, it sounded very slick. It's, It's evolved from padding it out with jumpers to... I've now got a little light in here and I've got some foam. And he had a really great price too. I asked him what he wanted. He said, no, I don't want anything for it. But if you really must give me something, I'll have a bottle of wine. So it's a fair trade. So we're starting with some honourable mentions. Jake, do you want to go first? Sure, sure. So this week, my honourable mention is a chap called dr peter olasuga now he is a writer and blogger among other things and his wordpress is where his blog is is actually called myblackface.wordpress.com the link of course will be in the description bold choice yeah he basically writes a lot about sort of racial discussions he has so the kind of pre-context to him actually writing this blog was he's kind of introduced it as follows I have conversations about race more than I'd like to. Some of them are interesting discussions with respected colleagues and friends, others shouting matches with idiots. They make me consider and reconsider my own positions, so I'm writing them down for you. Which is fair enough, you know. No, it's, it sounds like an interesting concept for a blog. Sure. It, it really is. And this particular one stood out for me. I was reading it the other day. As you know, and I'm sure the listeners do by now, I'm a big sports fan. And his most recent blog was called Monkey Chants and Bananas, Understanding the Racist Language of Sport. Mm-hmm. As I'm sure you've probably seen over time, and I've cert- I know I've certainly sent you some links to stuff in the past, but there's a lot of people that get racially abused on social media that play sport. Yeah. And in particular football. Recently, the English Football League, the EFL, have come out and basically yeah, pleaded to Twitter and to Facebook basically to do more to help yeah. them try and combat this racist behaviour. Do you mean to the platforms themselves? Yeah, to uh, it's an open letter they penned to Jack and Mark to Mm -hmm. basically say, look, you guys talk all this talk about being a place that doesn't tolerate horrible behaviour, but you're not doing jack shit about it. No, because it makes them money. Why would they? Exactly. It's kind of how it's all sort of come about. It's been a real kind of event in the last week, particularly in in my sort of social circles that we've discussed. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he speaks about is the fact that racial abuse in social media is often described as shocking, but it's not. It's commonplace. To shock is to something that is an anomaly. It's out of the ordinary. And people say, oh, yeah, that's that's not good. That's, That's pretty shocking that people still do that. It's 2021. It's like, it, it's not shocking at all. Nothing no. surprises me. He's, he's gone into more depth and he talks about the entrenched subconscious bias in football. For instance, when people analyse players and games, darker skinned players are more likely to be described by their pace, their power, their physicality and their strength. Whereas mm-hmm. lighter skinned players are more likely to be commended for their intelligence, their creativity and, and their work rate. I mean, that, that is systemic racism right down to the core. A hundred percent. And whilst these terms are used to praise players, you know, it's not used as a slight. Mm -hmm. It is with the intention of saying, you know, yeah, he's a real powerful, he's a real natural athlete, but it really feeds into those sort of suggestions of hereditary physical abilities Mm -hmm. over mental capabilities. So it's about that racial hierarchy that black athletes are kind of more grunt and shunt. These guys are more physically capable, but, you know, the light players tend to be more finesse and intellect and, you know, just a little bit more mentally capable of processing things in a way that they can use their mind to benefit as opposed to their physical capabilities, Mm -hmm. which if you are to ask, and I know this from, obviously my honorable mention last week, Simi, and, you know, she posts some of the comedy things she'll post about there is, you know, being a Nigerian woman and yeah. you say you know there's more doctors outside of nigeria than there are in nigeria yeah so i think it's something ridiculous like the ratio of doctors to people in nigeria compared to the amount of doctors that leave nigeria to go and work elsewhere so 
of course, if there was this genetic incapability of black people to have this same level of intellect and, you know, sort of creativity and things, and why are Nigeria producing doctors? Do you know what I mean? It's all- yeah, exactly. There is no scientific basis for it. It is literally just the result of Europeans suppressing the idea white and black is equal so that they could profit from a slave trade a few hundred years ago. Essentially, yeah, it's a case of that's kind of what the the, the, the sub basis of it is. Um, so anyway, yeah, my my honourable mention this week is Dr. Peter Olasuga at Pete Olasuga on Twitter or myblackface.wordpress.com if is where his blog is at. Awesome. Please give it a check out. It's a really interesting read. It's something that personally it's not new to me because it's the sort of thing I've read about. But if it is something that you've not read about before or kind of thought about you know please do check it out have a read you know open your mind to these kind of thought process behind this because it really is something that people don't think about it necessarily enough by by pushing things to say it's it's subconscious it's subconscious we're absolving ourselves of any fault well it's subconscious because we're saying it's subconscious but by the fact that we're saying it's subconscious it means we're aware of it so anyway that's my honorable mention dr peter olasuga this week fantastic no it's great uh, great recommendation did you have an honourable mention to bring it yourself this week? I certainly do. So this week, my honourable mention goes to a podcast that I've mentioned before, but is a podcast that is very close to my heart. And I'm mentioning them this week because they're coming up to their one year anniversary of being on the air. Is on the air the right term for a podcast? We'll go with I on guess. the air. Yeah. So yeah, they've been around for a year and it's Late and Night with Brian Wecht. They are the chaotic comedy talk show podcast for the Terminally Online, which, you know, is everyone these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hosted by Leighton Gray, who is a horror sommelier and co-creator of Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator, alongside Brian Wecht of Ninja Sex Party, one of my favourite bands, um, produced by a friend of the show who I've shouted out before. Jarek Centeno mm. and yeah like I say they're one this week um, so massive shout out to the team and also to the Discord community I've met a whole lot of very super supportive and very talented folks through that server so yeah amazing congratulations on getting to 52 episodes guys may the chaos continue happy birthday I'm not going to do it don't, I'm not, no, I can't don't. <laughs> it's for the best well, congratulations though, guys that's awesome and I know they've kind of shouted us out before as well so we appreciate that you know Jarek's been amazing for shouting us out yeah so man so, really yeah, appreciate I, that friends of the pod shall we get on to our creators for the week yeah let's move right into it we had a real bumper episode i really really enjoyed last week's episode last week was good it was good fun yeah and i I said i listened to it back the other day and i just sort of thought yeah do you know what it's different listening to it back because you hear the conversation you don't hear Obviously, when we're talking now, you hear your thoughts, don't you? Yeah. Whereas you're listening to it back. And I must admit, every time I've got to the end of one of our episodes and I'm so invested, at the point you say, and you you go through the dice numbers and you say, do you accept these terms? Every single time I've been about to answer you without realising I'm listening to the recording (laughs) instead of uh, we're not actually in conversation. Yeah, you, you don't have the perspective of having to go back and edit these things. So I've got it all in my head and I can visualize it. Whereas you just get the raw experience as a as a yeah. listener which is um is quite cool i'm i'm quite jealous yeah, yeah it's pretty it is pretty cool to me. i mean you could you could teach me to edit it and then you yep. I mean, to be fair you'd probably be listening back and god he's cut that out why has he left that in <laughs> what's he done there that person wasn't even on the pod how are they talking here dave <laughs> <laughs> moving forward our uh, creators this week would you like to go first this week I, I shall actually. I th- yeah. This week I rolled a three again, didn't I? Last you week. Did. Yeah, in the totally not loaded dice. Yeah, not at all. I brought a musician to the table this week after all in last week's three. And this week's musician is Miranda Brooke. She is a singer, songwriter, and model from Mullion School, actually. Our school. Yeah, our old school. And I won't use the word discovered because obviously I didn't discover her. I first experienced her in the first lockdown. She was oh, doing really? some live music streams. Uh, and I just thought, you know, I reckon very, very vague memories of 
teaching her PE a very long time ago. So I used to work at that school. It popped up on my Facebook. Someone had shared it. And I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you shared me the link a couple of days ago and I was blown away. You know, I've, it's a performing arts school. A lot of really talented people come oh, out yeah. of that school. But yeah, I, I was stunned that I'd never discovered her before. So yeah, great find. Yeah, it was just sort of popped up and I was like, wow, okay, she is pretty damn awesome. So um, she's got a YouTube channel as well. Obviously, the link's in the description. And it, she did uh, sort of a cover every day for 28 days throughout. I uh, posted that up on there as well. So please mm-hmm. do go and check them out. It ranges for everything from a bit of Bill Withers to some Justin Bieber to Birdie. She's got a really distinctive voice as well. I don't know what the accent is, but it kind of, it's a little bit like Amy Winehouse kind of vibe, but more acoustic, I would say. Kind of a, a very, very much a jazz voice. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very, it's very distinct, and it's really just just mellow. It's, 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 I guess it fits with the jazz description, doesn't it? It's just really mellow, really easy listening. And I think on top of that, she's got she's got really nice bubbly demeanor with the camera as well. And I think it's a real great skill to when you're watching a video, you feel like you're part of this. You know, you're w- watching a performance. You're not just watching someone sing. Oh, hundred percent. And like, you know, I've I've shot music videos before where the the band is or the act has been incredibly stilted and difficult to work with. Like do, they don't perform to the camera. She definitely performs to the camera, which would make my life way way easier. <laughs> okay, I can imagine. It's awesome. I even played some of her music earlier. Again, the guys I had in this week really go. With- we're a really nice group to kind of get to know each other and stuff. And the chap that gave me the acoustic phone was obviously a musician. And I said, oh, yeah, I told about the podcast. And I said, oh, this mm-hmm. is my, kind of my creator this week, Sneak Peek Place. And he was very impressed as well as a, a, a fellow singer-songwriter who also plays the guitar. So he was like oh, really, really impressed with that. As I say, she does write her own songs. She's actually, her first album went up on Spotify in July last year. And the Spotify link we will post in our description too. And there's... A, Quite a few singles have gone up recently as well onto Spotify with her, her most recent single, Butterflies, and that was released on the 5th of February, so very recent. And that's the reggae track, isn't it? Yeah, the newest one, yeah, that's, that's that. I, I kind of, I'm, I'm glad you said that as well because I picked up that straight away with that vibe. I was like, yes, like it. The other thing as well that's pretty cool, so she's mostly active on Instagram, at Miranda Music 24 uh, 7. So it contains snippets of her songs, obviously, the link to her YouTube channel. But it also just does like photo shoots as well. And obviously, living in Cornwall, you get some fantastic scenery. The picture for her, for her single for Butterflies, was shot at one of the beaches in Cornwall. I obviously saw it on her Instagram page. She'd been called like, that photo shoot on the beach and then. When I saw a song popped up as a new release on Spotify, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Especially being from such a relatively secluded area in Cornwall, which it is. It's a bit different to being... Yeah, we're, we're a bit out of the way down here. Yeah, it's a bit different if you kind of grew up in Bristol or London or something where it can be very quick to be heading into live performing at busy bars and I think if venues. she'd been if if she'd grown up in London I think she'd be signed by now quite easily she's got a very accessible kind of voice and kind of style I I, I agree with you there I, I would agree and yeah I when did she just get picked up to be honest you know, oh, she certainly got the talent to do it but equally at the same time it's quite nice to kind of see the progression and the growth mm-hmm. for someone that is so you know, close to home from the same school, just a little part of Cornwall. And, you know, if she does go and make it a you know, huge time, whatever, it's like, wow, that's amazing, you know? Yeah, go and give no. her a check out, guys, at Miranda Brook or Miranda Music 24-7 on the socials. All of the good links will be in our episode description. They certainly will. <laughs> Join us next week on Radio Norwich when we speak to a road sweeper that has had the same broom for 25 years. It's had five new handles and 17 new heads. Tune in to find out more about this man. I can see on the waveform you've been talking. What have you been saying? No, I haven't. I didn't do anything. I I can literally see that 30 seconds ago you were talking. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You've been busted. I... I may have done a little Alan Partridge snippet. Oh, well, I look forward to finding that in the <laughs> tomorrow. Cool. Do you want to know about my creator? I do. I do indeed. Excellent. So last week I rolled a six, which meant that I it, it was a right it, it was a wild card roll. Um, I could bring anyone to the table that I choose. I wasn't I wasn't hindered by genre. 
The word wildcard is very appropriate for this particular creator. This individual delights in the not-so-subtle art of trolling collaborators and guests in the most creative ways he can think of. I'm also continuing the trend of rolling sixes and bringing creators to the table that span multiple mediums. I like that. I'm going to try and maintain that. My creator this week is a musician, podcast host, theoretical physicist, and a marketing manager's worst nightmare. This week, I'm talking about Brian Wecht, aka Ninja Brian, from Late Night with Brian Wecht, which was the honourable mention, so kind of tying everything together. Nice. I wanted to explore him as a creator because I think his entire career is fascinating. So I'm just going to run you down a list, basically his resume. And Brian, if you ever listen to this, I got most of this from your Wikipedia page. So if it is wrong, you are welcome to come onto the podcast and set the record straight. Fair. Valid point. So he was originally a theoretical physicist. He's held positions at Harvard, MIT, University of Michigan, and the Queen Mary University of London. He specialised in particle physics. His work included research on string theory, supersymmetry, quantum field theory, basically everything that Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory studied through that character arc. Um, Yeah, Brian actually knows all of it. That's pretty impressive, to be fair. He's an incredible mathematician. He delights in the most difficult crossword puzzles and math problems. I rate that. Alongside his work as a physicist, he's also been on the organisational board for a conference called Nexus, which is the Northeast Conference on Science and Skepticism, which is a science and critical thinking conference held annually in New York City. He's been a big part of that for the last few years, which is really, really exciting. They bring a lot of guests together from all kinds of fields on from different scientific backgrounds and also critical thinkers as well. He's talked about it a lot on the podcast that he hosts, so I'd definitely check that out. Yeah. So... Aside from being a theoretical physicist, he is also a a very chaotic keyboard player for a comedy rock synth funk band called Ninja Sex Party, one of my favourite bands. And he is in this band alongside Game Grump's own Dan, Danny Sexbang Avadan, performs all kinds of hijinks, both in the videos and in live performances. Whether he does or doesn't piss off Danny is up for debate, depending on the practical (laughs) joke. He has admitted to instances where he genuinely thinks he's pissed Danny off to make him walk off stage, which is part of a bit but he thinks he's pushed it too far quite often. So I can't wait for when bands are touring again and we can we can go and see them. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, so Ninja Sex Party have, since 2009, released five original albums and three cover albums. Ninja Sex Party have also been part of a trio called Starbomb, which is with Aaron, also of Game Grumps, where they focus on more video game-oriented tracks. They've done three of those albums since 2013. Brian has also, in recent months during this pandemic, started his own kids' band called Go Banana Go. Ah. Now, he has a very young daughter, Audrey, who is adorable and has guested on the podcast and Game Grumps many times. And he has created a comedy slash semi-educational kids' band which is very funky, very very musically complex for what you would consider to be a kind of a typical thing for kids yeah. that age. Yeah. I was listening through the whole album, as you do during your research, and mm. it's just got, it's the kind of music that I can't wait to share with my kids when I have kids, because they have like, there's, there's a song about tying your shoelaces as fast as you can, and it's written like it's the commentary to the Grand National Race. Oh, it's, awesome. it's like, it's like <laughs> and he's got the left sock on, and he's got the right sock on, and he's got the left shoe. I like and that. It's just, it, there's just the, the whole energy and that he has a few guests on the album, and just uh, going from Ninja Sex Party to this and just building something which is a really great legacy that his daughter can listen to is just... It, it warms my heart and it's just he's a really nice guy and that's that's the proof if you need it. Awesome. That's that's awesome. I like that. Brian has also been the social media manager for Game Grumps, trolling fans with shenanigans such as, do you remember Instagram for a while did grid posting? You'd use an app to post nine images in sequence uh, when you, yeah. you looked at someone. So basically he would post those out of order and just flood the Game Grumps feed with just <laughs> random squares, random colours and it made no sense. He lost them thousands of followers in a very short (laughs) space of time. So as a social media manager, it's kind of the opposite of what you're going for. Yeah. 
But, you know, Aaron was really cool about it. Funny, isn't it? <laughs> and it's it's very on brand for both Brian and the Grumps. So yeah. just kind of roll the punches. He also has a running bit, which links back to what you did to me last week by playing your, your air horn klaxon from your phone. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a running bit on their podcast. That, so he writes all the theme songs being a musician. Yeah. There's a running bit where he won't play the theme song for the guest, but still ask what they think. And he'll build this up for, I'm not kidding, 20 to 25 minutes of the show just going <laughs> this is this is the best thing i've ever written ignore all of the albums this is my magnum opus and it's first of all leighton hates this bit it's uh it's it's gotten to the point now where the bit is out of control it it works maybe 50 percent of the time i think someone is keeping a score <laughs> in the discord server uh, i was keeping score for a while and it was kind of neck and neck when i last checked works 50 percent of the time 100 percent of the time <laughs> exactly and as they would say that's a late night promise um, <laughs> there have been some amazing reactions to this bit it's been anticipated by a few people it's been yes anded and improved by a, f- a few other people that have called him the biggest genius in the world um but it, that's the kind of shenanigans you can expect from brian and it's just he's just an all-round really nice guy he's answered some of my questions in the discord server and live on the podcast it's fair to say we wouldn't be doing this podcast if they hadn't kind of said yeah just go and do it and see 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 what it's like so yeah huge props and shout out to brian go and check out all his work follow him on twitter at brian wecht all the links will be in the description down below i, I can remember actually when you sent me the link to late in that and you're like hey check this check this podcast out First of all, it's awesome. Second of all, we I, I sent in some questions and Brian's been awesome with helping us, sort of giving us some advice on how to set up and stuff. The, uh, you know, that's how Jarek got involved with with helping us as well. So yeah, big, big props to all of them. And yeah, go and check out Brian and uh, all of his work. So shall we do our charity shout out for the week? Yes, indeed. Please tell me it was your turn this week. It was indeed my turn and I have prepared something. So uh, this week's charitable shout out goes to a charity called Student Minds. It's a mental health charity and it was formed back in 2009 and the focus is on empowering students and members of the mental health community to mm-hmm. develop the knowledge, confidence and skills to look after their own mental health and support others. I think that's a really great thing to do because it's one thing to be able to support other people as a charity through the means of support but we can quite often forget about the sustainability of something and I think the model that they've gone for of a lot of the initiatives are student-led there's peer support programs as well as research driven campaigns and workshops and it's all focused on driving change and mm. creating as sustainable an environment for this sort of mental health support as possible um, some of the biggest barriers they found are obviously first and foremost for students. It's the multiple living locations. Yeah. Obviously, if you if you travel away for university and this year in particular, where at times people probably haven't known from one week to the next where they're due to be, that poses a problem because if you're getting support in one location and you're not in another. I worked out that in my first year of uni, I didn't sleep in the same bed for more than four days in a row. Just because Crazy. of the situation I was in, I was back and forth to Cornwall from Cardiff and it was just, it was a mm. really chaotic time. And if you need mental health support or if you need any kind of support, just moving that much and it might not be to that extreme, but it is really important to have some kind of consistency with your support. So that sounds like a really great initiative to be focusing on. Yeah, it's um, it's not so much about offering support, but it's also that reiteration, that reiteration that it's there because someone might be struggling and it might take four, five, six more times before someone actually goes, do you know what, actually, no, I'm not okay and I would like some help. Research shows that it, it takes a lot of attempts before they will seek that support for themselves. Uh, and there we go. Uh, that among among with the travel thing, the other barriers, as as you've just said, it's there's, there's still a stigma that surrounds mental health. And um, the, the purpose is to try and create an environment where students can help one another. They've got the support of this charity, and create other means and other support channels that they can use as opposed to having to rely on the NHS which they might not be able to get seen or and, and encourage people to break down that stigma and you know, open up and really do kind of acknowledge that mental health is important and that we need to look after it 
But it, it is a tough time for students, you know. It's mm-hmm. people are away from home, or they're not away from home, or they're at home stuck uh, stuck at university, and they they're not allowed to go out into campus properly. They're stuck in halls, stuck in a room. You know, other people are stuck at home. Have got the kind of the weight of oh, I've still got to pay my monthly rent for a room that I'm not even staying in. The you know on top of that, the, the student debt anyway. We all kind of know when we go to uni, we're going to be encumbered with with the loan fees. But at the same time, it doesn't make it any easier when that's just one other thing. But if you're in a position where actually I'm, I'm at I'm at home, or I'm, and then I'm at uni, and then I'm at home, the learning hasn't been as smooth as it could have been because of the pandemic. And now I've got to worry about my room, and now I've got to worry about well, I've I've gone to uni, but what am I paying for? What's the point in this? It can really well you. Just from me speaking, then you can you can see how it spirals. Yeah. I think it's a huge testament to the fortitude of these students who have persevered through it. You know, well done, guys! Mm. You are doing an amazing job. Especially those who are medical students who are being thrown oh, yeah. right into the thick of it because they are yeah. being drafted in to help with this. So yeah, um, please look after your mental health if you are one of those people who is struggling with the adjustment to university life, which is difficult as it is um Mm. but please do do seek seek help if you need it absolutely and i would say on to that these charities aren't just for people that need help but reach out to them and ask how you can support as well that's another thing i think that kind of goes amiss sometimes is that yeah it's a really good point we encourage people to seek help for themselves but if you're in a position where you can support someone but you're not sure how to do it reach out to these charities ask the questions how can i be a great support and ally to my friend my partner my whatever but yeah so um, as ever the links will be in the description so we've got instagram student mind org and twitter and there will be a support link to how you can find support but also a donation link as to how you can donate to some of the fantastic work they are doing <laughs> Jake, I believe it's time for the Dice of Destiny. So for those of you who might be new to the show, the Dice of Destiny is the six-sided dice that I play Dungeons & Dragons with that I use to decide what type of creator, what subgenre of creator we bring to the table for next episode. So you have a history of rolling threes and fours. We'll see if we can break that streak. I, I do mix these up every week to avoid us getting the kind of the same. So the rules this week are if I roll a one, it's a influencer of any kind. Could be social media, could be offline, could be whatever. If I roll a two, it'll be an artist or illustrator. Number three will be a Twitch personality. So game streamer or artist on Twitch. Oh. Number four will be a writer. Number five, a photographer, and as always, number six, a wild card, so you can bring whatever you like to the table. Ooh. Jake, do you accept these terms? I do. These are very different. They, they are. I thought I'd mix yeah. things up properly. I like this it, week. yeah. I, I took YouTube out of rotation because we did a YouTube special recently. Yeah, that's, so I thought that's it was, a uh, fair shout, to be fair. And, yeah. and music, because we've done this week, has been very yeah. music heavy. So I'm going to roll the dice for your good self. Nice. It's a two. So you have an artist and or illustrator. Oh. That's interesting. That is interesting. That's very interesting. I hope interesting. that works. I, retrospectively, I hope that works in an audio format. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. sure it will. Cool. I will now roll the dice for myself. Jake, we've got another special on our hands. Artist. I roll the two. <laughs> right. New rule, <laughs> you're not allowed your phone in the podcast booth that you've built you know for what? yourself. Yeah. It's your fault. You said about it. I'd completely forgotten about that with the air warning last week. How could I forget? I, I, I heard your face as, as I said as I did that last week. It's just the whole, the, <laughs> the fuck just happened? <laughs> well, I panic because I'm recording on two fronts on this. If something happens in my headphones that I don't expect, I'm like, oh my god, what's gone wrong with the recording? <laughs> Where's this noise coming from? Yeah. But no, you're, ju- you're just trolling me and my, my delicate sensibilities as an editor. <laughs> anyway, so just to clarify for the listeners, I too rolled a two, so I will as well be bringing an artist slash illustrator, which two, two. by our own rules does mean we will be doing a special. Yeah. However... There is a caveat to this week. That special is going to have to wait until the week after, because next week we are lucky enough to be joined by our very first guest. 
Oh, which I will, yes. I will leave as a mystery. We organized this literally hours ago, but we're going to do it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We're taking things up a notch to the next level, and we're going to have to pretend to be professional and know what we're doing. Are you sure I'm ready to be here? You know, this, this is <laughs> no, this is actually a ruse to slowly phase you out. I'm afraid. Ah, okay. I mean, we saw it coming, didn't we? It's been a good run, guys. <laughs> um, uh, you have really enjoyed these these seven weeks. <laughs> yeah, remember me. So that is another episode down i think it's been a, a quick romp through some interesting creators it has plus i mean you know you, you're having to edit less and less of my crap out every week so that makes your life easier i mean it varies you know <laughs> there's, there's a huge alan partridge section which i look forward to getting to this week <laughs> yeah it's not it's not <laughs> you'll like it you'll definitely like it Great. It's stuff. a bit of a it's a bit of a partridge crossover actually. Oh my god. So you you might leave it in or you might not. It depends how you feel it. Yeah, it go down. If you're lucky. Anyway, thank you so much everyone for listening to us ramble on. It has been fun as always. It has. Look after yourselves. We will see you next week with our mystery guest. Ooh. We might put some reverb on that and make that all kind of ooh. Definitely do. Or I might not. I might just talk about doing it and leave that in. We'll find out, won't we, when the podcast is released? (laughs) Yes, we will. Will he remember to do it? Let's find out. Tune in Sunday. Same time. (laughs) We will see everybody next week. Stay safe and have fun. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Have a pleasant week. Creme de la Creator is produced by Grant Alexander and Jake Lane. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at CDLC Podcast, or email us at cdlcpodcast at gmail.com with your suggestions for creators you think we should feature in future episodes. Stay safe and look after yourselves during lockdown. If you need to talk to someone, please reach out using one of the links provided in the episode description. See you next week. <laughs>